Taxonomy is the practice and science of classification. The word is also used as a count noun. A taxonomy, or taxonomic scheme, is a particular classification. The word finds its roots in the Greek language taxis, taxis meaning order, arrangement and nomos, nomos law or science. Originally, taxonomy referred only to the classification of organisms or a particular classification of organisms. In a wider, more general sense, it may refer to a classification of things or concepts, as well as to the principles underlying such a classification. Taxonomy is different from meronymy which is dealing with the classification of parts of a whole. Many taxonomies have a hierarchical structure, but this is not a requirement. Taxonomy uses taxonomic units, known as taxa singular taxon. Applications Wikipedia categories illustrate a taxonomy and a full taxonomy of Wikipedia categories can be extracted by automatic means. Recently, it has been shown that a manually constructed taxonomy, such as that of computational lexicons like WordNet, can be used to improve and restructure the Wikipedia category taxonomy. In a broader sense, taxonomy also applies to relationship schemes other than parent child hierarchies, such as network structures. Taxonomies may then include single children with multi-parents, for example, car might appear with both parents, vehicle, and steel mechanisms. To some, however, this merely means that car is a part of several different taxonomies. A taxonomy might also simply be organization of kinds of things into groups, or an alphabetical list. Here, however, the term vocabulary is more appropriate. In current usage within knowledge management, taxonomies are considered narrower than ontologies since ontologies apply a larger variety of relation types. Mathematically, a hierarchical taxonomy is a tree structure of classifications for a given set of objects. It is also named containment hierarchy. At the top of this structure is a single classification, the root node, that applies to all objects. Nodes below this root are more specific classifications that apply to subsets of the total set of classified objects. The progress of reasoning proceeds from the general to the more specific. By contrast, in the context of legal terminology, an open-ended contextual taxonomy is employed—a taxonomy holding only with respect to a specific context. In scenarios taken from the legal domain, a formal account of the open texture of legal terms is modeled, which suggests varying notions of the core and penumbra of the meanings of a concept. The progress of reasoning proceeds from the specific to the more general. History Anthropologists have observed that taxonomies are generally embedded in local cultural and social systems, and serve various social functions. Perhaps the most well-known and influential study of folk taxonomies is Émile Durkheim's The Elementary Forms of Religious Life. 
A more recent treatment of folk taxonomies including the results of several decades of empirical research and the discussion of their relation to the scientific taxonomy can be found in Scott A. Tran's Cognitive Foundations of Natural History. Folk taxonomies of organisms have been found in large part to agree with scientific classification, at least for the larger and more obvious species, which means that it is not the case that folk taxonomies are based purely on utilitarian characteristics. In the 17th century, the German mathematician and philosopher Gottfried Leibniz, following the work of the 13th century Majorcan. Philosopher Ramon Lull on his Ars Generalis Ultima, a system for procedurally generating concepts by combining a fixed set of ideas, sought to develop an alphabet of human thought. Leibniz intended his Characteristica Universalis to be an algebra capable of expressing all conceptual thought. The concept of creating such a universal language", was frequently examined in the 17th century, also notably by the English philosopher John Wilkins in his work An Essay Towards a Real Character and a Philosophical Language 1668, from which the classification scheme in Roger's Thesaurus ultimately derives. Topic: Use of taxonomies in various disciplines. Topic: <laughs> Taxonomies in software engineering. Vegas et al. make a compelling case to advance the knowledge in the field of software engineering through the use of taxonomies. Similarly, OR et al. provide a systematic methodology to approach taxonomy building in software engineering related topics. <laughs> software testing taxonomies Several taxonomies have been proposed in software testing research to classify techniques, tools, concepts and artifacts. The following are some example taxonomies A taxonomy of model-based testing techniques a taxonomy of static code analysis toolsingstrom et al. suggest and evaluate the use of a taxonomy to bridge the communication between researchers and practitioners engaged in the area of software testing. They have also developed a web-based tool to facilitate and encourage the use of the taxonomy. The tool and its source code are available for public use. Topic taxonomies in research publishing Citing inadequacies with current practices in listing authors of papers in medical research journals, Drummond Rennie and co-authors called in a 1997 article in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association for a Radical Conceptual and Systematic Change, to re-ECT the realities of multiple authorship and to buttress accountability. We propose dropping the outmoded notion of author in favor of the more useful and realistic one of contributor. Since 2012, several major academic and scientific publishing bodies have mounted project credit to develop a controlled vocabulary of contributor roles. Known as credit contributor roles taxonomy, this is an example of a flat, non-hierarchical taxonomy, however, it does include an optional, broad classification of the degree of contribution, lead, equal or supporting. 
Amy Brand and co-authors summarize their intended outcome as, identifying specific contributions to published research will lead to appropriate credit, fewer author disputes, and fewer disincentives to collaboration and the sharing of data and code. As of mid-2018, this taxonomy apparently restricts its scope to research outputs, specifically journal articles, however, it does rather unusually hope to support identification of peer reviewers, as such, it has not yet defined terms for such roles as editor or author of a chapter in a book of research results. Version 1, established by the first work Working group in the Northern Autumn of 2014 identifies 14 specific contributor roles using the following defined terms: conceptualization methodology, software validation, formal analysis, investigation resources, data curation, writing, original draft writing, review and editing, visualization, supervision, project administration, funding acquisition reception has been mixed, with several major publishers and journals planning to have implemented credit by the end of 2018, whilst almost as many aren't persuaded of the need or value of using it. For example, the National Academy of Sciences has created a tax transparency in author contributions in science webpage to list the journals that commit to setting authorship standards, defining responsibilities for corresponding authors, requiring ORCID IDs, and adopting the credit taxonomy. The same webpage has a table listing 21 journals or families of journals, of which, five have, or by end 2018 will have, implemented credit, six require an author contribution statement and suggest using credit, eight don't use credit, of which three give reasons for not doing so, and two are an informative. The taxonomy is an open standard conforming to the open stand principles, and is published under a Creative Commons license. Taxonomy for the web Websites with a good designed taxonomy or hierarchy is easily understood by users, due to their possibility to develop a mental model of the site structure. Topic. Guidelines for writing taxonomy for the web Mutually exclusive categories can be beneficial. If categories appear several places, it's called cross-listing or polyhierarchical. The hierarchy will lose its value if cross-listing appears too often. Cross-listing often appears when working with ambiguous categories that fits more than one place. Having a balance between breadth and depth in the taxonomy is beneficial. Too many options breadth will overload the users by giving them too many choices. At the same time having a too narrow structure, with more than two or three levels to click through, will make users frustrated and might give up. <laughs> ISA and HAZA relationships Two of the predominant types of relationships in knowledge representation systems are predication and the universally quantified conditional. Predication relationships express the notion that an individual entity is an example of a certain type for example, John is a bachelor, while universally quantified conditionals express the notion that a type is a subtype of another type for example, a dog is a mammal, which means the same as all dogs are mammals. Topic. 
See also equals equals notes <laughs>